Dr. Chaya, Dave, welcome. Dave, to you first. What are some of the big decarbonization trends that we're seeing across Southeast Asia? Thanks, Georgie. We're, we're seeing a lot of uh, momentum behind this, on this transition to low carbon business uh, uh, across, uh, across Southeast Asia and across sectors. And, uh, and I'll probably point to three things that, that are common across sectors. Uh, one is that companies are starting to see you know, where is it that they can take immediate action, fund projects, you know, get implementation on the ground within what is within their, their economic influence, right? So anything that's NPV positive, where there's returns, you know, just driving that through. The second is recognition that this is a major change in terms of how you operate. So changing in terms of organizational operating models, governance, targets, incentives, you know, what drives behavior in, in operations. We're starting to see, you know, early signs of this, and of course, it's diverse, you know, by sector, by company, and, and, and so on. Uh, and, and the third thing is that, you know, this is really, it's really a team sport, right? You know, it is not one that any one company can do, and, and there's certainly big recognition that is, is public and private. Uh, it is working across your supply chain. It is also working with your industry peers on, on points of synergy and scale. And, and all these are, are, are fairly common trends that we're seeing across different sectors in Southeast Asia. Well, that's the common trends. Let's get to be more specific, shall we? Dr. Chaya, can you talk me through your journey, your transition journey to a low carbon company? Mm -hmm. Thank you, George. Uh, I think we're starting to see the trend, like uh, Dev mentioned uh, a couple of years ago, right? And we believe that it's, it's a timing, it's, it's right, meaning even in Southeast Asia. Because uh, you, you might not know that Southeast Asia is one of the regions that will get the most impact from, from climate. And, and we think that the business needs to lead, right? So we decide that uh, why don't take the journey and then it's going to be a short term and also a long term that uh, we need to manage in terms of business, right? So we, we're starting to see the value that meaning our supply chain and also the ecosystem start to picking up. Uh, so we, we launch a new business. Uh, one is a bio-based, meaning we can use uh, agricultural uh, products, right, from which is abundance in the region and then turn into different kind of offering to, to customer. I think secondly, we look at the recycling business uh, because uh, the recovery rate in the region is quite low. It's a 10, 15 percent. So we have a room for improvement and we can use this as a you know, raw material for different kind of products. So that's the value that we see seen from the as a climate solution. And we think it's, it's, it's going to take off soon, uh, but uh, I think the market is picking up now, but it may take a couple of years to, to, you know, to a level the business is uh, feasible to going forward. Dave, you said it was a team sport. People need to play together. How important is public-private working together and what is best practice, I suppose, here? Yeah, it was hugely, hugely important, uh, Georgie, and uh, and you know I can't point to, to best practice, but but I would say certain certain uh, characteristics that we're starting to see in in the market. You know, one is is proactive engagement and advocacy. So, market structures and incentives need to change, and these are changed with policy and laws that change within each market and government, and and getting the private sector involved in in consultation and engagement on what works, what doesn't, you know, what are the right signals and time, uh, you know, that makes a big difference. So I think that's one characteristic. Another characteristic is that we, we're moving to this in this realm, but we need to get action on the ground, right? So we need to get projects, we need to, you know, fund things and, and here bringing the best of public and private, both, both in terms of funding. So for example, blended finance with public money, private money to, to make it work, but also capacity within the, the private sector, working with the public sector to advance some of the big um, investments, projects, uh, programs that need to be scaled. Uh, this is the other characteristic, you know, to, to put it simply. Dr. Chai, how is collaboration working in the chemical sector specifically? I think it's, it's quite solid, meaning everyone is, uh, you know, in the supply chain uh, collaborate, co collaborating together. But, but again, to have a broader ecosystem, I think we need, uh, like Dave mentioned, the policy support. Uh, from the government as well, right, to, to have a well established in terms of the uh, ecosystem and supply chain. But now it's, I think that we see the size getting better and if the government can support more specific in dif different business, right, in the supply chain, for example, recycling or promoting the use of uh, bio-based uh, products, it may be helping in terms of, you know, getting the, the demand quicker in terms of the, the market. Good try, Dave. Thank you so much.